Welcome to Culture Talk. This is the segment where we talk about the intersection of science, faith, and pop culture, and how culturally relevant topics can be used to start conversations about your faith. I'm joined with Dr. Fazal Rana, biochemist. Hey, Sandra. An awesome guy. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. You know, we're going to talk about something that's super popular right now, ancestry DNA tests. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, have you done one? No, I haven't done one. Uh, I, I'm a little... You're skeptical? Uh, yeah, that... <laughs> How, in terms of how reliable those tests are. Well, let's dive into first, like the science behind these tests, because yeah. that will help us look into the conversation a little bit. Well, more. you know, people hear the term DNA testing, mm -hmm. and I think they're confused by exactly what that means, because actually, people may not realize this, but there's a number of different types of DNA testing that you can do. So there's medical DNA testing mm -hmm. that tells you whether or not you have a certain genetic propensity for a disease. There's forensics DNA testing, what's done at crime scenes, right. and then something like what companies like 23andMe or Ancestry.com do, which is called genealogical ancestry DNA testing. Mm -hmm. And there the idea is to try to determine what geographical region of the world you originate from. Right. And the way that's done is by looking at certain genetic markers in your genome and comparing them to a reference database of people who uh, are from different parts of the world and based on the percentage matches trying to estimate where you came from and maybe even estimate ethnic uh, your ethnic makeup. Mm -hmm. Well you're talking about where people came from and that leads me to the next question of you know some of us get Neanderthal DNA as part of our results. So what does that mean? Yeah, well, I'm actually not surprised. And in mm -hmm. fact, I could tell you without any DNA testing whether or <laughs> not somebody has Neanderthal DNA. If you are from Europe or from Asia or from the Americas, uh, you most certainly have Neanderthal DNA in your genetic makeup. And in fact, if you're from Asian origin, you might even have a little bit of a genetic contribution from these highly enigmatic creatures called Denisovans. Mm -hmm. And this is because people believe that when humans began to migrate around the world, we interacted with Neanderthals and Denisovans and through that process interbred with them, introducing what is now low levels of DNA from these hominids into our genome. But you really don't need DNA testing to know whether or not you have Neanderthal or Denisovan DNA. Well, it's really interesting because when we think about having Neanderthal DNA as Christians, we might say, well, wait a minute, what does that mean about us be being created in God's image? So how would we look at that from a Christian perspective? Yeah, well, that's a, a really tricky question. It's mm -hmm. a very messy topic, the idea of humans interbreeding with Neanderthals. And I meet a lot of people who see this as a real serious challenge to the biblical account of human origins. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's a number of ways in which you can handle this. It's a complex scientific, you know, and theological and biblical issue. And in fact, we spend a whole chapter in my book, Who Was Adam, kind of unpacking that question. But the bottom line is, I don't necessarily see this as a faith challenge, uh, though it's, again, messy, because there's, there's an interesting passage in Genesis 6 mm -hmm. where it talks about the sons of God uh, basically interbreeding with hum human beings and uh, producing the Nephilim. And so this is an example of an interbreeding event that's part of our early history as human beings according to scripture. And you wonder if there is perhaps some connection between what's being described there in Genesis 6 and what we're now discovering as interbreeding events. So I'm, I'm glad that you point that out because we think as Christians, we look at the scientific data and you know we, we might want to challenge it or just outright accept it. But we also need to go and look at scripture and see whether or not that fits. So then you're saying that we see it in the scientific data and then also in the Bible as well. So that's that's good. It's a comfort to hear. A lot of times, though, that people would view would view that as something that would oppose Christianity, looking yeah. at Neanderthal DNA. Um, so you, you had mentioned earlier about the reliability of these tests. Like, are they even reliable? I think in a broad sense, they are reliable. Uh, I've heard stories of people submitting uh, DNA samples to two different companies and getting different results. Oh, wow. You know, and, and a lot of it has to do with what is the reference database that they're using. Mm. There's a possibility of human error in these analyses. Yeah. So 
Broadly speaking, they probably are reliable, but you know, I don't know that I would get, go overboard in terms of looking at those results as somehow being definitive about who I, I am. Right. Well, you know, and that's something that we think of a lot, especially in our desire to want to do these DNA tests, is we think about our identity and we think about mm -hmm. who we are. And that's only part of the equation, but but we're more than just the DNA tests, right? That's right. You know, and there's a, a, a an idea that permeates our culture today mm -hmm. that you might call genetic fatalism or mm -hmm. genetic determinism, where we believe that we're the sum total of our genes. Mm -hmm. And so we are so attracted to these DNA tests because, as you said, we want to know where we come from, which with the idea that this shapes who we are, mm -hmm. our DNA tells us who we are now and, and what is our destiny going to be. Well, the fact of the matter is, even biologically speaking, it's not just DNA that determines who we are. There, the environment plays a big role. Mm -hmm. Our experiences play a big role. Uh, and so our DNA isn't our destiny, uh, if you will. And the fact of the matter is, Christians, we argue that really what defines us is an immaterial essence, basically our spirit or our soul. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the good news is that, you know, through the work of Christ on the cross and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, our destiny is shaped to who we are supposed to be through the work of our Savior and the Holy Spirit. That's such a comfort for us to just remind us of our true identity and really our identity is in Christ. And these DNA tests are fun, but we're more than just that. So now I have my final question. How can we use the DNA tests as we talk about them with friends and stuff, how can we use that as an opportunity to share our faith? Well, you know, the same methods that are used for DNA testing of this sort, at least, are the same methods that anthropologists use to try to characterize the origin of humanity and the early migration of humanity. And what's provocative is those studies indicate that all human beings come from a mitochondrial Eve and all men come from a Y chromosome Adam that many people think correspond to single female and male individuals, and you have to wonder if these are pointers to the biblical Adam and the biblical right. Eve. So th th this, this DNA testing is a great chance just simply to talk about some really uh, spiritually profound issues. Who are we really? What really determines who we are? And where do we really come from? And you know the answer matches in a large measure to the biblical account of human origins. Wonderful, well thank you so much mm -hmm. for that Fuzz. And you know, you're talking about human origins. I just wanna point out that you're gonna have this DVD coming out from Opposition to Opportunity. So this, if you wanna hear more from Fuzz, I would say visit reasons.org 2819. You can get this DVD as a gift for any donation in the months of January and February. And you can learn more about human origins through this video.